What up, players? It's Warboss Tamp and it's Mug. Welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint a House Stark Bowman using the Bretonian Bowman figure from Warhammer Fantasy Battles and some extra awesome fluff from A Song of Ice and Fire. So, getting started, we're using Raikland Flesh Shade, Bugman's Glow, Cadian Flesh Tone, Gorthor Brown, Karak Stone, Eshin Grey, Dark Reaper, Celestra Grey, and uh, I think that's it. So taking a look at our model, I think it's really a, a good, nice color scheme, and I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, let's get started. At the end of part one, our guy was looking like this dark, dirty, you have that wash. And so what we're going to be doing with this video is bringing up the highlights. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be painting XV88 onto the bow. Some of you might have seen in another video that the bow had this really bad mold line going through it. So what we're going to do is just take our XV88 and we're going to paint over the parts that I'd scraped off because of the mold line. Uh, if I had done this correctly and scraped off the mold line completely before, then what I would be doing with the XB88 now is just kind of going back over the parts that have been shaded. The goal is we want to keep the shading in in the uh, recessed areas. So we're painting the, the sides, the um, middle part of the bow. And here, looking at it from the front, you'll notice that the bow, the bows of the Bretonian bowman figures are kind of like a um, squared, edged. They're like four, four plate planes to it. You've got the front and the back and the two sides like this. The empire bows for the hunter, huntsman, and archers figures are more rounded. So what that does is it gives us a chance to kind of play with these hard edges a little bit more. Now XB88 is a base paint, so that means that you're going to need to thin it down on your wet palette before applying it, otherwise it'll come on a little bit too thick, you might see some stray brush strokes or it'll get uh, lumpy and we don't want that. You, don't, you want it to be as smooth as possible. We're moving on to the Dark Reaper now and some of you might remember in the first video I did of this, my Dark Reaper was really, uh, it was like down to its last legs. It, it, had, it had a good run but it was almost completely emptied and so what we're doing is we're using a new pot of paint and uh, what I'm doing is I have it on the edge of my brush now because we're basically repainting the base color over the shade what you want to do is take a look at the model and see where the lines are and what I mean by that is when the shade dries it will dry in patterns so that you'll notice that some parts are darker it'll look like it creates false folds and uh, in the cloth and what you want to do is you want to work with those and uh, find the ones that you like find the shadows that you like and then bring the highlight color to either side of it to emphasize the depth in the cloth I'm using short brush strokes at the moment and uh, when you're painting anything like cloth the short brush strokes are actually the most useful because it will allow you to show the differences in texture and uh, the way that cloth just kind of lies on different surfaces uneven surfaces if this was if this poor little peasant guy was wearing a full plate of armor or or, or power armor like a space marine then all of those edges are very very um, flat even though it's rounded and there's there's edges uh, the main surfaces are always flat the, the armor does not conform to the body all this cloth that this guy's wearing all this fabric it conforms 
conforms to the body. So especially on the hood, you can see where the shade dried and created lots of uh, very interesting looking shadows on the back of the hood. So we want to kind of go with that. And we want to paint around the shadows that you like. If there are any, if it seems like it's a little too dark, the shadows are a little too uh, too much, then you just paint over them and uh, and then they'll, they'll go away. But you do want some lines of shadow in there just to create that effect of the cloth conforming to a shape. With our Celeste Gray, basically what we're doing is we're re painting the base color on the shield that represents uh, his affiliation with House Stark. The last time I went to my uh, local game store, I found a Song of Ice and Fire role-playing game source book for the uh, Seven Kingdoms, and it was pretty cool. It had lots of interesting information. Um, I couldn't find the main rule book, but it had lots of pictures and great artwork of the different houses that are loyal to each of the great houses, and I think that's a, a very, very awesome thing to, to have. I might pick it up uh, if this project goes anywhere, if I get any, any interest or, or any, even any commissions from it. Just if, in case anybody is a big fan of the books and says, I want to. I want an army done in completely this minor house's colors. I'll be like, what? What's that? It's interesting, it shows all the heraldry and iconography and even characteristics of the minor houses. So yeah, I might I might definitely think about picking that up the next time I'm there. Eschen Gray, what we're painting on or highlighting with Eschen Gray is the you can see the foot bindings, the leg bindings and the uh, belt that's slung over his shoulder. So the goal is we want to stick with the areas that are going to pick up the light while leaving some shadows. Also the, yeah, the grip of his bow there. So uh, you want to make sure you have a steady hand or that you've braced your, your wrists so that when you're painting areas like the belt or the, the bag slung over the shoulder, you avoid the sides where the shading is and you just paint in the center. Uh, that might mean also that you double check to make sure your brush is pointed uh, to a very fine tip or that you have a fine detail brush that you can use for those sections. What we're going to do with the Carrick Stone is we're going to try to create the illusion of uh, some very fine wood grain while also popping up some highlights in the middle of the wooden areas of the bow. So we want to leave some of that kind of sepia-toned, uh, light tan beige-ish beige shading right by the grip and right where the caps of the bows are, of the bow is caps where the caps are <laughs> at the top and the bottom. But we are going to be focusing on the center. So painting there right in the middle of the, of the top and the bottom. So what we're doing is we're, we're creating some depth because the colors are changing in the bow. When the eye looks at it, you see the, the more bone colored, ivory colored parts of the bow, and you see it kind of transition into uh, this darker, more golden looking brown. And uh, that's going to create a very interesting focal point to look at when you look at the figure because the clothes are so drab and uh, so dark that when you're looking at the figure, uh, the bow will pop out at you. The next color we're gonna go on to is, if I can remember, Bugman's Glow. Unfortunately, I kind of missed when I was looking at this model when I was painting part one, I missed the fact that he's sticking his tongue out and I guess he's doing that to help him aim. 
and you can't really see it. Um, it's, it's a very small detail, but when you're looking at the figure from the left, uh, you can definitely see it. So we're just taking a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush and we're just accenting that part of the model. You don't want to go with too red a color because if it's too red and if it's too dark, it, it might not look natural and it'll, um, it'll distract from the rest of the face. So we're going to differentiate between the two color tones by adding some Cadian Flesh Tone for the skin. And this is going to add to the highlight by uh, we're going to really stick to the areas that are that are raised or that are more uh, stretched out. And so these are going to be like his hand, the fingers pulling the bow back, the knuckles on his wrists, his thumb, and uh, the fingers holding, holding the grip of the bow. As well as his nose, um, his lips, areas that are kind of popping out. The goal when you're re-highlighting is you want to keep the shade visible while bringing out some areas that you as the artist think need to be um, accentuated, the details that you think should pop out. So you can see with the left hand that I'm doing, I'm, I'm not painting his whole thumb. I'm kind of just painting the part that's uh, the part of the hand and the area of the thumb that's facing uh, when you're looking at the model that's facing that. So if you looked at the model from above or below, you'd still see that flesh shade underneath. And uh, that's good because no matter what direction you look at the model, you're going to get some depth to it. All of these steps, this entire video, in fact, if you're doing uh, a large sized army, and you don't want to bother with these details, I would say you don't have to do too many of these. This is really just for if you want to create, uh, if you want to take the time to do a really creative and well uh, thought out paint, paint scheme that kind of touches all of the areas and gives everything a little bit of a highlight. I'm oh, sorry about the autofocus on my camera here. You can see I'm adjusting the light to hopefully not pick up on that, that black uh, pad that I'm using. So I'm just reapplying the Raglan Flesh Shade now and what, what this is doing is it's tying in the Cadian Flesh Tone highlight to the, the darker areas. Some people don't do this and uh, some people turn this shade into this step of the uh, wash into like a glaze and either of those things is fine. Either of those ways of doing it is fine. Uh, I, I tend to think that because this is going to be a darker, more drab figure, you're going to want that uh, you're going to want that little bit of, of shading, a little bit more prominent than the highlights. So, so we're just tying down the colors, we're just toning it down, and we're uh, we're connecting them to each other with the shade. All right, this is uh, the most fun part that I've had with this model. We're painting on the uh, highlights to the fur cloak or coat that this guy was wearing. I guess shirt vest? The fur vest? We'll call it a vest because it's only covering his, his chest. So you, you'll notice that the paint stroke that I'm using starts at the top and goes down towards the tip and that is what I found is the most effective. If you want to get it done in the shortest amount of time, you could do a dry brush and that would just mean taking a shorter tipped brush or like a, a brush that is used specifically for dry brushing and uh, putting a little bit of paint on the end, wiping it off and then just brushing it back and forth really, uh, really quickly so that the the little raised edges of this fur vest will pick up the color while hopefully not getting the color onto the other areas. The thing I found with dry brushing though, there's not as much control as I would like because you're using the brush in a very uh, quick and haphazard way. It's very easy to get some of that color onto the other areas like the, the brown sleeves or the, the blue cloak or the gray straps of the belt or the bag. And uh, because of that, I don't, I don't really care for dry brushing unless it's a, a huge section of a huge model, like a ogre stone horn or, or a large vehicle 
or a large monster. When you're doing something small like this that has these interesting raised edges, like the fur vest, I feel like it's always better uh, to go in manually and paint every little detail by hand. Now if you make a, state, a mistake with painting your highlights on, then you just have to go back with a little bit of watered down Agrax Earth Shade to, uh, to, to, to tone down the colors. I'm kind of happy looking at the, at the colors that I was able to achieve, so I'm moving on to the next highlight which is Gorthor Brown and it's going to be used to highlight the sleeves as well as this guy's uh, skirt that he's wearing. Again, you want to keep in mind that we're trying to create the cloth effect by using lots of short paint strokes and um, not kind of conforming to any of the lines. So using uh, lots of different paint strokes where you actually see the brush strokes on the model. You can see how I'm kind of following a straight, more or less straight line going up the model's leg, but I'm not painting vertically. I'm not going from the bottom to the top or painting from the top to the bottom. What I'm using is a series of diagonal brush strokes. So that is going to create the effect of the cloth kind of rippling without conforming to a, a solid and sh a hard edged shape underneath the cloth. Okay, if you wanted to go with the second highlight to really bring up the colors, I, I didn't because I wanted this guy to look like a, you know, dark and murky and bleak. But if I wanted to go with the second highlight, what I would do is paint within the Gorthor Brown a second uh, lighter bonish color. So maybe a Carrack Stone or a Zandri Dust or a Rackharth Flesh. And I, you, you shouldn't do too much because, you know, cloth is not going to be too differently colored as it's as it's rippling on the model um, but yeah that, that's up to you all right thanks for watching everybody you can follow my work and uh, even if you're interested in commissioning a project with me get a hold of me through warbosstastudios.com or email me at warbosstastudios at gmail.com thanks for watching go house stark see you in the next video